pas le pas. Hey, you guys are right. Yes. In rough weather, this is an absolute must-have item. Um, all through the passage, Beverly and I were strapped up with one of these. We've got one each. Uh, Beverly was strapped to the back and I was strapped into the cockpit um, using with the use of hard points. Um, and then um, when we're going forward, uh, we've got lifelines as well. But oh, even in the cockpit, these were really useful to have. What I want to do today is to have a look at the passage we did yesterday, Ride Chicken Rock, and I'll go through it on the charts and see what lessons we can learn from it. This is where we were starting from, at Peel. And where we wanted to go to was Port St Mary, because from here our next passage would be to Liverpool, which would come from here, off over this direction. So we'd rather start from this side than that side. Here's part of the log from yesterday, and the winds were forecast as northwesterlies, force 3 to 4, occasionally 5 at first. So in this chart, that means the winds would have been coming in this direction, and we would have been travelling this direction. And the tide, the tidal stream, was also in this direction. So it looked like an ideal passage. We would have a nice beam reach and we'd have the tide taking us down this way. We would not have been able to get through Calf Sound because by the time we got down to here the tides through Calf Sound would have been running that way and there's a lot of tide rips and whirlpools and things like that and we couldn't really get in through that. We didn't want to try it. So we decided to go around the Calf of Man and although this area here has a lot of rips and tides marked in it. We decided to skirt outside the marked tide zone and come back right in. It was going to add, but what the heck. We had the wind and the tide behind us, so it looks good. And it was round about here at Brad Ahead, just coming up to Brad Ahead, that uh, we changed shifts. I took over from Gainer at this point, and it was just as we passed Brad Ahead that the wind did its shift round from this direction round to that sort of direction. So we were very much nose into wind at that point. So we stayed as much as we could outside the main zone, around Chicken Rock. At one point we thought we were going to have to go down to Anglesey because we didn't see how we could turn the boat round to go back to the Isle of Man. Um, but we were lucky. We got a space between two large waves. We were able to turn the boat and then literally gun the engine and try and run in front of any waves that were coming in in this general direction. Now, Although the line goes in this general direction, we were actually proceeding back to Calf of Man, then out this way, then back, and then out this way and back, which is what Gaynor meant when she said I was tacking under engine. Um, we basically ran a zigzag course up here, keeping the nose or the stern of the boat into the wind as much as possible, um, because it was round about this point over here that we nearly broached twice, and um, that was a very, very scary moment. Um, we were very, very glad to see the diving boat, which joined us round about here, just off Spanish Head. And um, he accompanied us the rest of the way into Port St Mary, and he was very, very welcome just to have the company. Tomorrow's forecast is supposed to be good, so the plan is to leave Port St Mary, come all the way across the Irish Sea, down to Queen's Channel, and then into Liverpool. And sadly, that will be the end of this particular series, um, the end of our Irish Sea adventures, and... We will have learned a lot about ourselves in Salty Lass and um, we'll be starting the refit for the spring cruises. But um, that's the end of this particular little adventure. So um, when we were in um, Peel, uh, the guy said uh, what you need to do is uh, when it doesn't have risers, uh, you can create your own. So that's what we've done here. We've um, tied a rope round the bottom of the rise and we've also got it just tied up on the top and then what we've got here is we're actually uh, tied up uh, and we're just using it as a riser yeah so you can see the rope there that's at the top of the tide and then it's all going down 
and that's our riser. Bev and I will adjust that in a few minutes. We were moored in the outer harbour against the wall because the inner harbour dried out and was only suitable for bilge keeled boats. Although it was Tuesday, most of Port St Mary seemed to be closed. Even the good luck takeaway we had some bad luck with because it had decided to close on this particular Tuesday. In the end, we brought some groceries from the local co-op, took them back to Salty Lass and had dinner there instead. But it's a five metre tide tonight and that is actually right down at the lowest. So. <laughs> the next day dawned bright and clear, the forecast was right for once, and we were able to see our friends from the Isle of Man diving charters bring their boat in and give a lovely display of how to dock. And they're going to be unloading there in front of us. it was time for us to say goodbye to the Isle of Man. We enjoyed it immensely, but it was time to begin the long trek back across the Irish Sea over to Liverpool. But at least we had nice weather. All the rest of it. After all the whatever we went through yesterday this is just absolutely perfect and hopefully the sales will be going up soon